Oh, okay, collectors. Here we are again. Uh, I think we're on unboxing number 87. Is that right, Ob? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 87, and uh, and today is um, August the 13th, according to my English calendar here. Compliments of Andrew and Vivian Gates. And uh, you're all looking good, so I guess we'll start with our video. Um, I think before we before we get started, we'll make a couple of drinks, which is our normal routine. Could you go for something, Ob? Sure. Sure? Okay, so we'll start out here. At least get them made. And so, we're almost at the end of the summer now. A couple more weeks and that's it. And for you guys down in uh, Australia and New Zealand, uh, uh, pretty soon it'll be summer for you now. Uh, I know you've been in the you're in winter when we're in summer, so it's weird being on the other side of the the world like that. But uh, here we go. We'll just put a little in here to get going. It's early, you know. Don't want to drink too much at 12 o'clock. Is that enough to get you going, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and a little dash of the soda here. Dilute it too much. Okay, and uh, uh, here's to you all. I wish you the best. And, uh, mm. oh, yeah, that's a good one. And we'll start out with uh, uh, keep getting people keep writing me that they, they want a shout out, so uh, I don't mind doing that. It's kind of fun. So why not? And uh, mm -hmm. so let's see the um, what we have here um, is a, a very nice guy talking about Australia. Uh, Rob Harris, great collector from Australia, and um, uh, he says that uh, that his um, his wife. Uh, just had her um, birthday on August the 2nd, and uh, her name is Lizzie. So happy birthday to you, Lizzie, and uh, and many more. And I think it's kind of nice, too. Um, uh, Rob bought a um, Ava Braun uh, knife from me about a month ago. Uh, and guess what Lizzie got for her birthday? Uh, yep. And according to Rob, she loved it. So, uh, you know, I'm always saying a little equal treatment is a good thing in this hobby. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier to live, you know. You won't get so much of that, what are you going to sell all that stuff, you know. It, uh, it's a lot easier uh, uh, to get along in life that way. So, okay, Lizzie, happy birthday to you. And then I have another good guy from, uh, from England, Phil Colley. Uh, he had lots of nice comments to make on our last video and asked if I'd give him a shout out. So there you go, Phil Colley. Uh, and then one more, um, uh, my friends um, uh, Tom uh, Kendall, uh, who's an army type collector, uh, uh, wanted me to uh, give a, a shout out uh, to um, his best friend Ivan. It's, that's Ivan Crimple, I think his name is, and uh, uh, he's a guy that uh, literally haunts me uh, at shows. Uh, uh, he'll always have a nice piece that he knows I want, and he starts out at a very high price, and after about three days of working me over, we finally get down to what the price should be and, and make a deal, and then it's usually some kind of trade or something too, so, but anyhow, uh, our best to, um, uh, to Ivan, and um, we'll look forward to uh, uh, working out another deal at the Mac Show that's coming up on um, September the 14th, which I hope you'll all be there. You don't want to miss that show. So, I think I got everybody, and uh, uh, if Ivan's mad at me for singling him out, he can talk to Tom Kendall. He's the guy that started all this. Mm. 
All right, so that's that's that, and um, I wanted to do one more thing before we get to the uh, unboxing. Uh, we've had um, dagger tool kits uh, for many years that we've been uh, supplying to collectors, and uh, uh, we ran out of them all, so we needed to get a new design. So we've come up with a design now that's pretty neat. It has the um, four pieces all built into one, so that you only have to... And the other ones, there were four separate little wrenches. So these are all in one and should be very easy uh, to carry around, I would hope, anyhow. And a lot of guys don't understand what these are all for. And I'll try to show you here. Um, of course, if you have an SA dagger, there's a little wrench here that will get in here and, uh, and take this, uh, this top nut off. So that's a handy thing. Uh, we always need a... Uh, an SA wrench uh, and then if you're fortunate enough to have a uh, diplomatic or a um, government official there's a little tool here with two little points and you guys know that the the uh, government official and um, Diplo is held together with a um, with a spanner nut on the top that has uh, two holes and this tool was designed to uh, in effect just um, uh, stick into the two holes and then you can turn the spanner out and um, the only reason you'd want to really do that is um, these daggers are numbered inside and it's fun to see all the numbers on the different parts uh, uh, the spanners are numbered the back strap of the hilt is numbered the front strap is numbered and also the cross guard is numbered and the number is also stamped into the wood of the um, of the grip plates so uh, I usually don't really like to take them apart, especially if they look like they haven't been apart because you don't want to take a chance on gouging up the, uh, the spanner holes. But anyhow, that's, um, that's what this, this part is for. And then lastly, uh, there's two, two things here that uh, can be used for um, uh, red crosses. Uh, you guys, we see a lot of red crosses with um, loose grips, and uh, many, many collectors just think, "Oh, you just you just turn that big screw down, and uh, and that'll tighten it up." Well, the big screw has nothing to do with the grip at all. It's just a cover screw. Um, so what happens with these if you if you take the um, take the, uh, the nut out here, this screw, which you want to make sure you have a, a good grip on it, you don't want to burr it up, and then when you look down inside, uh, you'll see a brass nut in there, and you see that that brass nut has two little cuts out of each, one on each side, well this little tool here goes down into the grip and you can grab those uh, that nut with this and actually there's two nuts the top one holds the bottom one in place and those are the nuts that control the tang they hold the dagger together so this is an indispensable tool for something like that especially having a loose red cross grip okay so so if anybody's interested in um, in getting a tool kit uh, we, we have about 150 of them that we ordered, so that'll hold us for a while, and um, they're not cheap when you just have a custom-made thing like this. It's pretty expensive. Um, so they, they sell for 35 bucks. Oh, okay, so I hope that's good information for you. Oh, nobody here on Sunday to answer that phone, Ob. Yeah. Yeah. Another customer, too. Yeah, another probably. customer. I can't understand it. Oh, well. Just one other thing I wanted to wanted to talk about too. Uh, um, I don't really take any time off. Uh, I told you before I'd rather work than be going here, or going there. But um, uh, last Monday, uh, my son Tom Jr. has been bugging me to 
that we ought to go over to a new casino in Philadelphia and shoot some craps. Well, I love craps, to be honest with you, but I, I haven't played in, oh, five or six years, and I thought, well, uh, that sounds like a good idea to me. So Tom showed up with his, uh, his girlfriend with him, uh, Marmara, is that her right name? Uh, <laughs> Maribel. Maribel. I always get it wrong. And um, so I thought, oh, that's great. Maribel's going to be with us. So we get to the casino, lovely place, brand new in Philadelphia, as big as any Las Vegas casino, beautiful bars all over and really great. So we had a couple drinks there to get our courage up, and uh, then we went over to the crap table and uh, uh, fully expecting to lose, you know how that is, and uh, uh, put some money down to get some chips, and, uh, and the stick man shoves the dice uh, right at uh, Marmara. Maribel. Maribel. <laughs> and... Uh, she says, oh, get, get those away from me. I don't know anything about this game. I don't know how to throw those dice. And, and the guys at the table, ah, oh, come on, you just throw them. Just wing them down to the end of the table. She, so she says, okay. And she makes the first throw, and dice are going all over the place. But they did hit the table. And what does she do? She makes a seven right off the bat, so everybody wins on the pass line. But... Just to, I mean, it, it was just unbelievable. She kept rolling and rolling and rolling, making points, making numbers. Uh, she actually rolled for 40 minutes. I've never seen that before in all my days. And while she was rolling, uh, she kept making all these points, and, and uh, the crowd got louder and louder, and, and Tom calls... Uh, Maribel Boo Boo, and he's there. Come on, Boo Boo! Come on, Boo Boo! And before you know it, uh, the guys, the guys that are running the table, are yeah, saying, "Come on, Boo Boo!" And the guys on the other crap table, "Come on, Boo Boo!" And she, <laughs> she was, she was the hit of the whole place. But uh, to make a long story short, um, uh, I only won eight hundred dollars on all of that. If I was a real gambler, I mean, she had a thirty or forty thousand dollar roll for. Uh, somebody that really knows how to play dice. Uh, so that was uh, that was the first day off I think I've taken in years, uh, and to win some money and have all that fun with Boo Boo. Uh, Forty minutes she rolled the dice. I'm not kidding you guys. That if you know the game, you know that is uh, it's really something. These women I've seen it before that don't know how to play, don't know anything about it. They're the ones that you want to bet on. Well, so 800 is nothing to sneeze at. It's not bad. No, it was not bad at all. But like I say, when you keep winning, you're supposed to be doubling your bets each time and all that, and that's how you get these thirty and forty thousand dollar wins, which I I wasn't doing because I was just sort of just having fun, I guess. But uh, but anyhow, so there's another uh, problem I have, guys. Now you can, besides calling me a drunk, you can call me a, <laughs> <laughs> a gambler, too. But uh, You're not anyhow, a it, uh, it was a lot of fun. So, okay, uh, I guess we can start with some boxing, unboxing here. Let's see what we got. Uh, not, a, not an awful lot uh, came in this week um, in the mail. Uh, but we did have um, we did have quite a bit of uh, activity with um, customers coming into the office and bringing stuff, uh, and I'll show you what happened there too. But but let's see what we got here first. It's just a small envelope. Should be easy to open, hopefully. Got my trusty Bob Burns cutter, of course. Need a drink after talking about that gambling. Come on, Boo Boo! Boy, she was something. Man, never saw anything like that. Unbelievable. So what do we got here? Ah, oh, this looks like something nice, guys. Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. See there, guys? This is a formal AH napkin, white napkin. 
uh, with the political eagle and the AH monogram uh, all uh, brocade into the cloth itself. That's all hand done. Uh, very, very beautiful work. And the, in addition, the napkin has kind of a pattern in the linen too, the finest of linen. Uh, so they're really nice if you're collecting um, AH uh, flatware. Boy, it's great to have a, um, a napkin that you can lay a, a knife and a fork and a spoon on. It really makes it jump. So that's a real nice piece. Don't see too many of these, so uh, uh, it's a good, I, in my opinion, they're a very good investment. Prices keep going up on stuff like that. Uh, so that's, that's very nice. I like that a lot. Thank you, sir. The check's in the mail. Yep, that's a good thing. Now, let's see. This says a repair. I don't know what that could be, but let's see what somebody needs repaired, huh, guys? Why not? Let's see what's wrong with it here. It's always interesting to because you know a lot of things can be can be fixed and if you have something that's just not right and it's possible to repair it it's it's a good thing to do but uh, let's see I don't know what we got here this is a, an odd looking thing aha I see what the repair is can you guys see what's required <laughs> here <laughs> Let's see, I think this is all right. It's just a little... Yeah, I think the chain's screwed up too. You see the link that's hanging off of one of the loops? Yeah, there's some... Uh, yeah, there's some trouble with the uh, with the chain link here. There we go. That's pretty good though. But Robbie's right. There's a little something hanging off there. Um, but what this scabbard needs, obviously, guys, is uh, there's no leather on it. And it is possible to have these um, re-leathered. Uh, and the leather that's used is just terrific. It's um, it's just like the original, and the craftsmanship is um, is wonderful too. So um, we're glad to help out on uh, something like that. Doesn't look bad, bro. Like that. Looks you like cool. it that way? Yeah, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. Keep it that way. Don't get nah. it recovered. Looks like got caught with his pants down. Yeah. <laughs> well, to each his own, but. I think we can uh, we can get that done for that man, and I'm sure he'll be very happy what with kind it. Of, what kind of leather is it again? Moroccan? Uh, it's Moroccan. Um, that's a leather that the Germans used. Well, what and, kind of leather? Uh, well, Moroccan is um, made from um, a baby goat, mm -hmm. and it's quite rare. And uh, the leather is um, usually it comes from the Middle East, uh, but it's quite different quite difficult to uh, uh, to get and it's um, it's fairly expensive but the well, Morocco's in North Africa it's not the Middle East well that's, <laughs> yeah I guess it is I should say North Africa not the Middle East you're right but um, Moroccan leather has a, gr a very very small fine grain and that's why it's so desirable and that's what the Germans use too so if you have something recovered, you're essentially using the exact type of material that was used originally. So, it's no big sin, and it's certainly better to have than a scabbard like that one with nothing oh, on it. No big sin. Tell that to the goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the goat's probably not, not so happy. Uh, be that as it may, uh, let's see what else we got here. Did it again. To pay him yet? Yeah. Well, here's a huge letter here that the guy wrote. 
He's cut in half. Cut in half by the <laughs> razor, yeah. Oh, well, I don't I don't even want to read that. Let's just see what let's see what we got here. That's a good bubble wrap. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying the, the summer here. It's uh, It's been a hot one, I know, but, uh, well, fall will be here before you know it. Well, 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 let's see what we got here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. In the scabbard backwards, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, looks like it's got... Um, very nice uh, cross guards, very, very nice um, scabbard mounts. The grip is perfect. Look at that ebony, huh? Nice runes button, nice um, nickel eagle, and the paint on the scabbard is really terrific. Well, let's see what, what's in here. All right, well, the front of the blade looks good. Minor era Heist Troya, it's in nice condition. Let's see what the reverse is here. Uh, this is an 1196-38 SS. I think that's a WKC. I'm not sure, exactly sure, but I think it is. But uh, I'm sure you'll find out. It's a dagger that um, was made in 1938, and um, it's really in um, sensational condition. I probably should have read what that little note said, but, uh, but we can see what it is anyhow. That's a nice, uh, that's a really nice, uh, really yeah. nice dagger. Good example. That's about as clean as they come, guys. Good Beautiful. start. Beautiful, yeah. I like that. You like that one, Ob? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that looks, that looks like a honey. Okay. There's that little note. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see what we got next. Moving right along, as they say. Uh, that was a pleasure to open up a box with an SS in it. We haven't seen too many of them of late. I don't really equate WKC with SS either, you know? Yeah. Uh, not usually. It may not be WKC, but yeah. I, I'll have to look it up. 1196. Oh, I think you'll be Might told. Might be Wusthof, too. I'm not sure. We'll mm -hmm. see. But They'll tell you before you even get a chance to look it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Oh, come on, Whitman. You don't know the RZM codes by now? <laughs> I, I'm bad with numbers. I, you know, when I go to the Acme and they want to know your phone number for... Uh, what they, they put into the computer. I always have to look in my wallet. I can't even remember my own phone number. Boy, this guy sent us about a month's worth of newspapers. Holy cow, I hope there's something more than that in here. A month's worth of the Sentinel. Where's it from? Uh, Belcher Town. Belcher Town? Belcher Town, <laughs> that's the name of it. It's better than Fartersville, I guess. <laughs> Burke Town. Okay, hopefully there's more than the, the Sentinel in here. But we've got lots of reading there. We can uh, we can pass them around for everybody that's interested in what's going on in Belcher Town. Probably a lot of stomach distress. <laughs> <laughs> Belcher Town, what kind of a name is that? A little letter in here. Uh, oh, please make the trek to... Oh, okay. Oh, we, we, we see the piece first we before we see the, the check. Yeah. See whether it's worthy of that check. Ooh, it looks good so far. Oh. Well, it's a nice, uh, nice early dagger. It's a bickle. Hmm. It's really a, a beautiful hilt on it. Bickle made wonderful things. Yeah, Look at nice, that hilt. Nice grip. Yeah. Nice, nice grip. I remember this now. He didn't have a scabbard, and it was, he's just selling the, uh, selling the dagger. So I'll 
I'll buy that and uh, maybe hope to find a find a scabbard for it or whatever. It looks a little dull, but yeah, the blade's gray. Yeah, but the hilt is certainly beautiful. It's a bo. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, Ab and I somehow there was a hole in our glass or something, so we had to make another one. But hmm. Ah, that's all right. Then we realized we forgot our coasters too, <laughs> so we're using something really classy, a hunk of cardboard here. <laughs> that's not my style, but uh, what are you going to do? It's better than ruining this nice uh, velvet tablecloth. So let's see what we got next here. Good some bubble stuff. Popcorn. Popcorn and, and yeah. bubble stuff. Well, I'll see if we can get it out of here with a minimum amount of damage. Oh, no, there it goes. This stuff is just impossible, isn't it guys? You, to try to keep a clean workplace with popcorn is just just impossible. Alright, well it's not too bad. <laughs> We do there, Rob. Oh, it's a couple there. Oh, yeah, I'm over here. Oh, that's not too bad. But let's see what we got here. It looks like a some kind of a cap. Wow, Ooh, this is looking pretty scary so far. Boy, it looks real too so far. More police? No. SS? Yeah, well, that's KZ. KZ, yeah. Oh yeah. well, boy. Yeah. I'll get this out of here, guys. I know you're anxious to see it, and I'm fiddling around here like it. Oh boy. I guess I gotta reach through this bottom here. Wow. Oof. Yeah. Oh, wow. My goodness, guys! Uh, this is a KZ cap with this, uh, with this piping and uh, how's the insignia look? Uh, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Wow! I was going to show everybody till you moved it. It's got a, the um, uh, visor has got a little bit of cracking. Just to hold it. it still for one minute. What do you want me to do? Just hold it still. That's all. All right. And just looking around here, there's uh, there's no um, there's no more thing that I see anywhere. What's the inside and, uh, of the plane? Beautiful velvet band around it. Wow! All the um, watch that drink. The uh, the diamond uh, celluloid is all intact there. Looks like somebody may have stitched a couple pieces right there. I don't think so. Maybe not. Maybe no. that's the way it was done. Was it Larbet? Yeah. Larbite? And, and you can see it was uh, it was worn too. Yeah, that's a real killer, that is. Yeah, that's mint, mint, mint. It is really, there's one tiny little spot right there. Oh, that's it. On, <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, you know? it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's um uh that's a that's a serious cap guys. Uh beautiful um beautiful shape to it too. I mean it was worn but not overly and it's been really well preserved all these years. Wow. I don't know whether there's anything under these kind of things or not. I always hesitate to lift this leather up, but the leather's still nice and soft. And yeah, 
I don't see anything under the leather guys. But uh, wow, that's um, you don't see those offered too often. No, no, that's um, that's a premier cap, I think. Uh, we'll have it all checked out and all, but it uh, on the surface that really looks nice. Doesn't it look good, Ob? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, that's fun to have something like that. Oof. That's uh, the highlight of anybody's cap collection, I should think. Wow. One of them, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's really uh, that's really cool. Boy, scary. Scary hat there. goodness. Wow. I need a sip after that one. You see that cap, guys? Boy. Something wrong, Up? No. No? Somebody's blowing leaves outside or something. Mm. Okay, um, now we've got a kind of a big box here. I like this on the top of it. I won't show the guy's name, but uh, open here, ha ha. <laughs> I guess we have a better open there, huh? Yeah, the name is on the label anyhow. So oh, okay. <laughs> All right. oh, boy. I thought I was covering up the name. Well, since he says to open there, I guess that's what I'll do. Ha ha. Ha ha. Give it a whirl, anyhow. Let's see, it's not as easy as it looks. Let's see if it all comes up a little bit. I'm going right on your arrows here, just like you say. So far, so good. The Bob Burns cutter's doing the job. I think I'll put this on a floor. It's pretty heavy, so there must be something there. Hope it's not all books or something. Let's see. Well, he says, uh, here are the five bayonets we discussed in one army dagger for repair. Okay. All repairs? Uh, no, just uh, just the army dagger, I guess. Oh, well, let's see what we got here. You guys up for looking at some bayonets? Uh, a nice, uh, interesting fireman's frog. Look at the color of this strap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for Debbie. Oh, ah, jeez. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Debbie will appreciate that. She's not here today because it's Sunday, but but she'll appreciate that. Oops, I think I'll appreciate this. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Just what you need. Not bad, huh? You're running low. You're down to about 10,000 now, I'd say. No, oh, they get smoked pretty fast. <laughs> They're Fuentes, too, my favorite oh, brand. Yeah. These guys know how to make me happy, I think. See here. Alright. Let's see. Not here. I like the bags. I like the bags and yep. bags look good. I'm looking in here for something for Rob. Got Debbie and got me, maybe forgot Ob. How could that be? Well, let's see. Uh, I might be wrong. What does that say on there? It says Ob. It says Ob. Highlights on it. Oh, boy, we got a good man here. He took care of everybody, it looks like. Let's see what Ob's got here. Uh oh. Uh, 
boy. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. All Jamesons. Yeah, that's great. Just what I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Can you use them, Hub? They're not even the uh, airplane bottles. They're, they're bigger, even bigger. Than yeah, they're twice. That's like a double airplane bottle. Great. Uh, what's this man's first name? Yeah, we got to uh, we got to be nice to him. But his name is Bill Croning. And, oh, Bill. Yeah, thank you, Bill, Bill. Bill is really a nice man. I'll tell you, he's a a new customer. He's having a ball with the hobby, and uh, uh, you don't have to send us stuff, Bill. We like it though, don't we? <laughs> yeah. We like it. That's really, really nice of you, Bill. Well, let's see. Yeah, I can get through the video now. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to. Up. <laughs> let's see what we got here. Uh, according to his. His letter, they're, they're bayonets, and uh, all right, here's looks like a nice pack. Sure, Look how nice. clean that yeah. is. Beauty with the red felt and the offset rivets. Oh, nice uh, short blade. Yeah, and it's got the early uh, pack mark on it, That just the Siegfried Waffen there. So that's a uh, nice mint blade. So that's something somebody would like, I'm sure. Let's slow down a little bit. Going too fast? Yeah. All right. That means I have to have a sip. No, that doesn't mean you have to have a sip. Well, you said slow down. Another honey here. Beautiful hilt on it. And that's got the, the red felt in it, too. And the mortise work, button works. And, oh, beautiful blade. Oh wow! Uh, now, guys, this is this is one you don't see and very very desirable. Uh, it's got the trademark that, of the Sealheimer dog with yeah, the sword in his mouth. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Let's see if I can get that. Isn't that cool? Well, the two are plain bladed, but they're really beautiful condition. Yeah. How about that, the dog? I haven't seen that Sealheimer dog in a long time yeah, now, so like that's, that. a, that's a nice, uh, really a nice piece. Somebody will want that for their collection. I haven't for seen sure. a bulldog in a while either. Boy, well, you never see them. Not on bayonets. I know, yeah, not on SAs, bayonets, yeah. so I'm just saying. Wow, this is nice. Look how early it is with a real heavy hilt and heavy Bakelite grip. Almost looks like a Pioneer. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting looking bayonet, and it's got the that early stub underneath the lug. See that there? What do you mean stub? That little uh, impression that the lug goes onto. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. See that? That's an early feature, and a, and a regular um, short blade. Ah, it's unmarked. But what a honey! Wow, that's a that's a that's a beautiful. Um, that's probably from the early 30s, I would say, maybe even the 20s, but boy, it's really, uh, really nice. And another one here. Boy, these all have uh, magnificent hilts on them. Just beautiful. Mortise buttons all work. Oh, another short blade with a stepped end, mint condition. Oh, that's a nice icorn. Yeah. Well, these are really quality pieces here. Yeah, with that lug, I never noticed that before, and I'm seeing it now. Uh, is, oh, that, yeah. is that how they were all produced, or is that just a certain couple of makers? Or? Uh, it was an early feature. You see it on, on World War I and Weimar stuff. Okay. Not on all of them, but a lot of makers did that. Hmm. I just never uh, noticed that before. You know how a lot of lugs are loose, like yeah. here? This, yeah. See how that uh -huh. lug is loose? When you have that implement, that never happens. It's hmm. all one unit that goes right in. That's something I never. You never noticed that, huh? No, never noticed oh, that yeah, before. Oh yeah, no, that's a that's that's a neat feature on early bayonets. Quality. Lesson of the day. Yep. Learn something every day, Ub. Well, here's another nice piece with a good hilt. Let's see what we got here. Up. Oh, this is nice with a long one with a wide. 
um, groove in it, and fuller. that's another icorn too. Blood fuller, the fuller, not a groove. What's that? Fuller, not a groove. Fuller, you're right yeah. up. And what do we got there? Another yep. icorn? Uh, see, that's good. Correct me when I make mistakes like that. Oh, I appreciate it. That's not bad though, huh? No, nice. they're all real nice. They're all plain bladed, but still real nice. They're all real, is yeah. that all of them? Uh, yeah, that's all of them. And then he sent in something for to be repaired here. Uh, hilt needs shortened. Okay. I think what's, uh, what that means, uh, when you have a grip that rattles around, grip track. Uh, which maybe this is, Wow, it's a beautiful icorn. Yeah, the grip is loose. I don't know, it seems all right to me, but I'll take a look at it. Beautiful icorn dagger, though. Is it loose? Not when you tighten the grip. <laughs> maybe he just didn't feel like tightening the pommel. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but all right, well, I'll talk to him about that. Let's have that. a look at it. Beautiful icorn, yeah. mint, mint condition. Beautiful matching scabbard and the um, got the 3541 trademark on it. Yeah, it's a decent icorn army piece. Yeah, I don't know why he says the hilt is loose. If I'm reading it right. What are you talking about here, Bill? Tom, army dagger repair. We discuss hilt needs shortened. Has already has leather washer from Icorn. Uh, well, I'll I'll see what that's all about. Not a problem. Yeah, collectors. I forgot. Uh, Bill has some other stuff here that he put in with the box, and uh, we should look at this. Um, wow, this is really strange. And it's it's definitely original. I mean, that's a fireman's um, bayonet knot. Um, but they've um, they put pink leather strapping on it. Uh, probably just some manufacturer that made them that way is all I could say. I don't think it has any real significance, uh, but that's quite a rare knot. Uh, and it's absolutely original too. It's not something that was done. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, it looks like a set of Luftwaffe hangers here. They got the deluxe fittings and uh, uh, show a little wear and tear, but uh, they're not too bad. They're they're still collectible. So uh, okay, so that's good. So that's what we got in that great big box, Ob. Good box. Good box, yeah. Good box of stuff. I like all that stuff. I like the gifts too. Nice cigars, and uh, Debbie will, will love this candy. Oh, it's C's, oh, too. Man. I love C's. The best. Maybe Debbie will give me a piece. I doubt it. No. You're not getting any. <laughs> She'll say, nah, you're not getting any. That's just mine. Get out of here. All right, Deb. Okay. Now, next, what I'm going to do, guys, I told you, uh, several people came in uh, to our office this week and and sold us stuff so I'm going to show you some of that stuff okay all right uh, here we go this is just some of the stuff that came in so it was a it was a pretty good week here we have a um, a uh, early uh, essay. Uh, the scabbard is not too bad, anodized, nice grip, and uh, it's um, a fairly nice blade. And this one is produced by F. Dick. They made pretty nice stuff. So this is a this is a nice early uh, essay. It's marked S for Grupa Silesia. That's part of Poland now. 
Uh, so that's not a bad, uh, a bad piece. That's a good dagger. Uh, not too bad. And uh, next we got a um, an NSKK. Uh, it's a later dagger, uh, but it really has a pretty, pretty uh, grip to it. Look at that uh, little bit of tiger striping in it. And the back also, yeah, the back also has some. It's got plated cross guards with a little bit of um, age to the plating um, and a black uh, scabbard. Uh, the fittings are still pretty good on that. And this is a, um, uh, like I say, it's a later dagger, but let's see who made it up. Oh. RZM M7-9. That's not one you see very often. Uh, that was SMF. Small too. Really yeah, small. real small. and So that's kind of an interesting piece. Not in mint condition, but still very collectible. So that's okay. And then we got another one here. This is a, an interesting dagger that uh, you collectors may recognize right off the bat. What's different about the cross guards, Ob? Uh, steel. They're steel yeah. and they're chrome plated, yeah. as are the scabbard fittings. This is one of those Helbig daggers, mm -hmm. and in the Helbig daggers too, the grip eagle is up too far in the grip. Yeah, it's really high. It's really it? high, yeah, that's a feature of them. But the grip is nice, with some nice grain in it. Uh, this was the only maker to produce SAs with chrome steel fittings. In other words, you put a magnet on these fittings and they'll stick. It's the only ones that do that. And the other side is nice, the grip is got some more of that burl in it good paint good paint on the scabbard and the blade is very nice too still got grain in it and uh, just about mint it's very nice and then on the reverse is the uh, Helvig RZM I think they were 70 is that what they were of oh I don't know I think that's what they were RZM M770. You don't see uh, Helbigs very much, and um, and they're a key dagger if you're um, collecting SA types. Pretty hard to find. Uh, that's good. And, uh, yeah, I can't remember ever seeing too many Helbig SAs. Not too many of them, nope. And here's another another decent piece here. Uh, uh, this one, this one is, um, I think we saw this last week, yeah, this, this is the one that had the, uh, that somebody stuck a Cobra blade in a, uh, in late fittings. So this is just a, this is just a part stagger. But we saw that in uh, the last, um, I accidentally put it into this box. Um, and then we got a, uh, Pretty nice um, second model Luftwaffe here. It's kind of interesting. It has some gilt left on the swazes, and it looks like there was some gilt on the uh, swaz on the cross guard. Very unusual to see that. Uh, I don't know whether there's any meaning to it, uh, but it um, certainly appears original. There's the reverse of the pommel. The most of the gilt is worn off on there too, and. Uh, Nice white uh, white grip, and let's see who made this one. Oh, it's got a beautiful uh, mint blade. Yeah, really mint. All the grain in it and so forth, and uh, no maker on it. But an interesting um, Luftwaffe with those um, gilt features, which do really appear original. Real dark airplane gray to the must scabbard a, and the hilt mounts. Must all. be a general stagger. That's well, you could say it. that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, whatever you want it to be, I guess it can be. But uh, I just think it was some guy that uh, 
He liked a lot of glitz. Who knows? I see. Uh, here's a bayonet we bought. Um, this is a. This is really a killer. Um, it's a Robert class, uh, and it's um, it's to a um, a Panzer regiment in beautiful condition. Uh, that's really a nice thing. I think the regiment was based in Erfurt. And the, uh, the bayonet is, uh, the blade is perfect and uh, the hilt is perfect. Scabbard is decent too with a hanger. So that's a, that's a, a really nice um, rare bayonet. And uh, let's see, we got a Got a couple of HJ knives. Uh, this looks all right. It's good, good leather. Uh, very good hilt. Look how all the plating is there. Uh, the leather retainer loop is good. Ah, and a very decent blade. It's um, the blade is near mint. It's pretty nice and. Uh, and then on the reverse, it's marked um, M742. That is WKC, 1939. And the scabbard paint is still pretty good on both sides. Let me see the back of the blade again. Let me see the makers. That's a nice SHJ knife. cross grain left in that too oh yeah yeah I, I like that piece that's that's okay and here's another one here uh, this one shows a little bit of wear on the plating but it's uh, it's not bad uh, the scabbard paint is still really good and uh, wow the back of the scabbard is just about mint uh, and this is interesting too um, it has one of these real late um, leather hangers. This was actually artificial leather that they used and it must have broke during the period. And look at that period repair. Isn't that cool? Boy, is that well done. Who would ever do something like that today? You wouldn't even think of it with all those rivets to, to hold it together. And it did the job too. The hanger's fine now. So I like that a lot. That adds to the piece in my opinion. Wow, and a great blade. Beautiful, um, beautiful mint, mint blade with all the grain in it. No sharpening. And uh, this one is, uh, yeah, we see a lot of these. Uh, it's a Schüttelhofer 713. But that's a... Uh, that's a neat piece and with the repair to the leather I really like that it talks to you you know as we say collectors so that's a good one and another HJ we're getting lucky here for a while we didn't have many HJs coming in but now we're getting them uh, this dagger uh, shows some some wear it's got the pot metal uh, base um, but it's still the scabbard leather is great and the, the scabbard paint is pretty good and the blade is very nice too really really nice uh, uh, this one is um, no mottos no motto it's it's still it's a late piece um, it's a double marked um, tiger oh yeah with a RCM Yeah, it's probably made about 38 or 39, I would say. But that's that's a nice uh, example too. I'm happy to get these um, Hitler Youths because uh, boy, there's a, such a demand for them, and even though they made millions of them, it's hard to find ones that are that are at least a little bit nice. Uh, and let's see what else we got here. We got a. Uh, 
a nice, um, nice police bayonet. Uh, it's the kind that has the um, the work and mortise button, you know, with a slot. A uh, very nice eagle, not the usual aluminum eagle. It's a silvered eagle, uh, and the leather is beautiful. It's a brown color. It's not black. See that? It's really, really a nice thing. But it's funny, it has no numbers on it, never had any numbers on it. Uh, and the blade, the blade is a cut down though, so it was produced um, before the Nazi time, but no numbers on it. Uh, it might have been used by a officer perhaps, I don't know, but the, the blade is mint and also unusual too, it's unmarked. Uh, when do you see an unmarked police bayonet? So, uh, and nothing on the uh, spine either. Sometimes you'll see old arsenal marks on the spine. So, uh, it's, uh, that's an interesting um, police example there. Especially with the rifle slot and all, and, and the, beautiful, uh, the beautiful brown leather is really, really, really good. And then there was one more here. Uh, a Luftwaffe first. Uh, nothing to write home about, but um, uh, needs a little uh, shoe cream on the leather, but the leather is still good. And the same with the, uh, the grip leather. Uh, it's a later piece, uh, but it's all there. It's not expensive and a, and a good, good starter piece. And the blade makes up for a lot. Boy, the blade is absolutely mint. Uh, really, really nice. And uh, I don't know whether it has a maker. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a WKC. There we go. So there you go. So that's um, uh, that's the stuff that that came in that people brought in to sell. We don't usually get much of that because we don't really encourage people to come into the office because it's um, kind of disruptive for us. You know, we're supposed to be a an internet company and uh, and once you start letting people in the next thing you know it's a hangout or something and we, we just don't have time for that but but if they got stuff to sell uh, they can they hang are out. very welcome they can <laughs> hang out yep, absolutely all right guys we're time to have another little pop here How's your pop, Bob? You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. You're okay, all right. And uh, next we'll go through this stuff that this uh, this older gentleman brought in. He was a nice man. He uh, He's a guy that uh, collects baseball cards and guns and all kinds of stuff. And he, he said when he sees stuff that looks interesting, he... Uh, he just buys it and he's accumulated some things so he thought he would come in and uh, uh, he didn't even want to know what each, each piece was worth. He just wanted to know what I'd give him for the whole load. Uh, so he was a nice guy. Cheers guys. Mm. Ah yeah. So I'll show you what he brought in. I'll show you the, the silly stuff first. You know people you see these things a lot. They never have a scabbard. Uh, they're always made by um, Horster. Uh, they're actually Dutch naval daggers, uh, but they were sold in the 60s to tourists. So there's, um, I mean, there's some guys that like that kind of stuff, I guess, but uh, they're nicely made, but, um, but of course they're post-war, very nice uh, etch blades. Um, both sides they have the anchor on them and all so so those are things that uh, you see once in a while but it's, I, I want to show them to you so you know what they are if you run into it and say oh where's the scabbard and is this real or they never had a scabbard if you find one with a scabbard it's a real Dutch naval dagger um, and let's see what else he had here here's a uh, an SA Got a nice mar marked um, hanger on it here. I like that. Um, decent scabbard and decent grip. Looks like it's going to be all plated fittings. 
Let's see what. Uh, yeah, well, the blade is okay, but uh, not anything to write home about. Uh, it's got an RZM. 718-1938 but still it is what it is and it's something that's not uh, not going to be expensive get it up yep. yeah all right you know a good starter piece for somebody and then he brought this in uh, I like this I think it's a uh, second model Luft. Uh, very nice, um, very nice grip on it. See how it gets lighter in the back from the front, and it looks like it still has a little guild on the um, swazes. Uh, good airplane gray uh, scabbard, and look at this very little wear, no wear at all to the. Uh, Cause see, all the airplane gray is still in the pebbling. I like to see that. That's nice. And let's see what the blade is on this. Oh, beautiful blade. It's, um, oh, okay, I see why it's so nice, yeah. Uh, this is a nickel-plated blade. Um, and it was made by um, Wiresberg. And that's why you still see a little bit of the guild on the swazes. Wiresberg gilded their, uh, their pommels originally. And it's got the Waffen amp on it too and it's got a set of hangers with it but the um, I think yeah there's a buckle missing here uh, I have buckles I can get this um, straightened out that shouldn't be a problem so okay that's good that's not a bad Luftwaffe though I like that piece you like that one Ob? yeah, yeah. let's see what we got here this is some kind of crazy thing here. It's a bayonet and uh, some kind of nutty, nutty frog that uh, looks like it was meant to be worn from the front instead of the back. And uh, I don't know, and it's kind of broken and it's got a mortise button that still works. Let's see what the, ah, now the, now the blade's all sharpened up and uh, so, not really a very nice, uh, very nice piece there. Uh, it does have a man. Oh, it's made by um, Carl Wustoff, not Ed Wustoff. Carl Wustoff. Uh, but it's kind of a. I mean, it's all real, but um, it's been mistreated. It's a real combat piece there. Yeah, it's a real combat piece. I've just got the wording there. Perfect. Here's, a, here's another one. Uh, these are all from this old guy, guys. So we didn't have a choice. You got to buy it all, or you know. And this is a, another bayonet. It's in decent condition. Got a nice frog on it. Looks like a brown frog to me. And boy, that frog is just about mint on it. It's nice. Uh, good blade too. Uh, this is made by Arthur Everett's. You don't see them too much on bayonets. So that's not a not too bad of a piece. Um, I think the frog's worth as much as the <laughs> as the bayonet. That frog is tremendous. That looks like a really good um, police frog or something. You know, it's big. It's bigger than the bayonet. Is it marked at all? No, it's not marked. But love that frog. I mean, that's a that's really a uh, really a good frog for. For something special, that would be a, a great frog. Uh, and let's see what we got here. Uh, we got another Helbig piece here, only not in the condition of the one that I showed you first. Remember, I told you they're they're um, steel, chrome-plated fittings, and the scabbard also has the chrome-plated fittings with the high eagle, with the real high eagle up in the grip. It's funny, you hardly ever see these, and there's two of them. Um, it's got a decent hanger on it that looks a lot earlier than the dagger. And the blade is, eh, it's got a real uh, lousy uh, etch, which is typical Hellbig yeah. also. 
Um, uh, yeah, there and there's your mark there that RZM seventy was it? Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a hell big, kind of a rare thing, but not not in the best of condition. And then I got a uh, uh, a nice bayonet. I think this is Austrian. I'll have to check it out. Uh, but it's got a got a neat frog on it. Great big thing and original to the piece and nice wood grips and really look at the blue on the on the hilt and the scabbard blue is still all there and uh, oh look at that blade guys that's really really good has a maker mark on the, on it and so forth uh, uh, but for somebody that's looking for a very fine um, Austrian piece. I think it's Austrian. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, this is. A, I'll have to look it up, but I think it is. But that's a that's a nice, uh, really nice condition bayonet with a cool frog. And then we got a, another couple of HJ knives. Uh, this one, the retainer loop, the snap is broken off of the the leather, so that uh, that hurts the value and the. And the scabbard is not so good either. And the same with the blade, it's not, not that great. It shows a little sharpening. Um, no, it's another 713. <laughs> I see an awful lot of those <laughs> these days. Um, but it's a, it'll be, that's a, this will be a, a very reasonably priced piece. So it's a good, good starter piece. Uh, and then another one that uh, he had no scabbard and the quillins broken and uh, I thought well I'll I'll just buy it uh, maybe I can use the insignia or something every once in a while you find them without an insignia somebody dug it out or whatever so that's just junk uh, and then lastly the one thing uh, that the old man had that uh, that's um, really really good um, this is a, this is a, um, uh, a very early initial production, uh, Luftwaffe, and it's the kind with the staples in the back, uh, and the leather is still really good on it, and, uh, really nice, um, solid nickel fittings with the brass, um, sun wheels in it, um, good chain, I don't know what this is here for. The wearer must have had, must have used that in how he wore his dagger originally. He hung something uh, off of it. I think. Or hung something yeah. off of it. And what's interesting too, you see on these early ones sometimes, see the S fitting there that's holding the chain? Uh, that's a cool feature. Uh, you only see that on really, really early, early pieces. And, uh, and then the blade is a beauty, and look who made it, guys. Carl Eichhorn. Is there anything stamped on that scabbard, Ob? I can't see. That no. might, there might be a Waffen amp or something on there. I don't think so, Pop. On that throat, no? Not that I can see either. No, okay. And nothing on the... Uh, Cross guard. Sometimes, is there anything on that cross guard uh, that you can see with the camera? One of these days, guys, I'm going to get my eyes fixed, and uh, I won't be bubbling around like this all the time. Is there anything there, Rob? Maybe. Yeah, so I think there's something there. There's a Waffen amp, probably. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it a doesn't real, really real focus in on it though. It's just too much stuff yeah. going on on the table. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, but this is a, um, this piece is a real prize. So um, I was happy to get that. Um, the rest of the stuff, well, uh, we have lots of guys that are just getting started and looking for reasonably priced things. So uh, all this will pretty much fit into that category. Uh, the second look is pretty nice though. Okay guys, uh, 
I'm now down to my uh, to my last uh, group of stuff, which I'll get up here. Um, I hope you'll find these things interesting. Uh, I had two two really really nice ladies from Upper State New York who drove down here yesterday because they didn't want to they didn't want to send the things and. Uh, I guess they didn't they didn't really know who I am either they saw my name on the internet and uh, uh, so they just wanted to make sure that uh, that I received the things and that they got a receipt and all that kind of stuff um, which is fine I mean that's one of the problems when you're in this business you know we think oh everybody knows us well they do in the collecting world but if you're not in the collecting world who the hell's Tom Whitman, you know? It's just a name, and uh, people read where you get uh, caught up in these internet scams and things like that, and uh, so it's really, sometimes it's a, it's a little difficult to, um, to deal with people when you're really um, strangers. Uh, so, but anyhow, um, uh, these ladies were extremely nice and got here yesterday, and uh, I showed them around the house and took them in the garden and tried to make them feel comfortable with what I was doing and um, um, I think I was successful at it, I hope so, and uh, I really enjoyed their visit. Uh, but the, uh, the stuff that, that I have, um, uh, the one lady's um, father had uh, had these things for, for years. Uh, tucked away and uh, had never seen the light of day and um, uh, she said that her father was um, was friends with um, H. William Camming, C-A-M-I-N-G and um, Camming was uh, the chief prosecutor uh, for war crimes at Nuremberg from 1946 to 1949 uh, and he charged um, 21 Germans with war crimes, you, you know, the, the kind of stuff. But um, uh, during the time that um, Kamin was in Germany, uh, after the war, uh, he apparently accumulated some stuff. And um, as you're going to see, some of the stuff was uh, things that the, uh, the factory made, factories made, um, after the war to sell to uh, returning GIs um, uh, but some of the things and you'll see the the last piece I saved the best for last uh, are absolutely uh, incredible so bear with me on this stuff and mm. ah that's a good that's a good drink uh, and and I'll show you what they brought me Some of the stuff, you know, I know you'll go, ah, oh, that's great, but you'll see here. So, I put everything in this box, and um, save that till the last thing. You know, I like to tempt you with the last thing. So, here we go. This is what allegedly came from Judge uh, Kamin, who probably, who knows how a judge at Nuremberg would get things. Maybe just walking around the city or people gave him something because he was a prosecutor. I don't know. But we'll see. Uh, these first two things, I don't even know what they are, and I assume they're post-war, but I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody out there knows what they are, and I would really appreciate it if they would tell me. Uh, this is just a scabbard, and the other one has a bayonet-type device in it. And I don't know what this um, insignia is. And then along with it, there's a bunch of um, bunch of loose metals. Uh, I don't know what these things are either, but some of you guys may be able to identify some of this stuff and 
uh, give me an idea of what's here, but uh, there's there must be uh, oh, 30 or so of it's these. Looks Italian. Uh, huh? Looks Italian. Yeah, they probably, yeah, the ones that, you know, whatever, I don't know whether they're really, but uh, I'll probably just sell this stuff all as a, all as a grouping. But there's a lot of it in here. There must be, as we say, 30, 40, 50 pieces in here. But you can get the idea of what it is. So, so that's those things. And please tell me what this bayonet is, if you know. I'd love to know what that insignia is. Okay. And then this, I, I think, is some type of a, a fighting knife. Uh, I don't know whether it had a scabbard or not. It looks like maybe one of those British, or I don't know what kind of fighting knife it is, but um, uh, it might be something good. So for you guys that know about those, uh, I'd, I'd like to know about that also. And then, <laughs> and then this thing. <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. Uh, there you go, guys. <laughs> uh, this is a, a lot of the kind of stuff that they made after the war. Uh, as you can see, they, they covered a second model Luftwaffe grip with leather and put some wire wrap on it. Uh, and then they made a skull for it, uh, and obviously uh, this is a um, second model Luftwaffe ferrule and a first model Luftwaffe cross guard that they ground off all of the uh, details on it. Um, it's the same on the reverse, and then they put it into this leather scabbard, and it uh, uh, it does say um, it does say Germany stamped on the blade. Um, so we know that the, this is a post-war thing, but it's one of those silly kind of things that the factories made out of spare parts and uh, probably uh, told some soldier, oh yeah, this is from a KZ camp or something, you know, and uh, or whatever, but, uh, but I think they're always interesting. They're not worth much, but uh, I think it's kind of an interesting thing. And let's see what, what else we got here. Yeah, here we go too, guys, along with the, uh, the post-war stuff. You say, oh, that's an SA dagger. Well, the grip is actually made out of plastic, uh, and the, um, the cross guards are probably real. Uh, but, but when you see this, um, uh, this code B and A on the blade, uh, these were all made up after the war and sold to GIs. They never had a scabbard. They sold them with a paper type scabbard. Um, but they're interesting in, the, in that they were, um, uh, they are what they are. And uh, it was the kind of thing that um, one of the factories, whoever made them, uh, had a way of um, trying to just stay alive for a while. Uh, so there you go. If you're somebody that's interested in, in, in those kind of pieces, and, they, and, and there are people that are interested, and that's kind of cool. And then we have a, uh, we're getting better. Here we have a, uh, a nice uh, stag grip bayonet that's absolutely never been cleaned, never touched. It's all green, but you can see just looking at it that um, if someone cleaned it, the hilt is probably stone mint underneath. It's all still there with beautiful stag grips. The scabbard shows a little age, but it's still not bad. And a frog, and the blade is uh, well, uh, just the, <laughs> the absolute best you'll ever see. And that's a testimony of how nice that hilt is, too, if someone wanted to clean it. That blade is just um, just beautiful, um, and it's made by uh, Richard Herger too. Isn't that nice? So as far as stag grip bayonets go, uh, uh, that's a beauty. Whether somebody wants to keep it like it is, untouched, completely untouched, or clean it, I guess it wouldn't matter either way. Let's see if the mortise button. Yeah, the mortise button works in it. 
Yep, so uh, so that's a pretty nice piece. Boy, that blade is amazing. It's <laughs> It just goes to show you, it's, the dagger's always been inside the scabbard, so the blade just stayed mint. But the rest of the piece is too, I think, if it were cleaned. Very, very nice. And then um, uh, another piece that I think is kind of cool. Uh, it's obviously a second model Luftwaffe. And uh, <laughs> somebody added a little iron cross to the... Um, I mean, that's a war, war thing, kind of stuff a veteran would do or whatever. Yeah, it's imperial, too. It's imperial, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a neat thing. And um, the scabbard's interesting how the leaves yeah. stayed lighter color here. Um, and the bands are the same color as the leaves, same color as the cross guard. Uh, and it's got a, um, a deep orange grip with a nice, uh, nice pommel. And the reverse is lighter. Uh, and the original porta pee is still still on the dagger, and uh, we look at the blade, and and there we go, another <laughs> really <coughs> nice mint blade where it just has never been out of the the scabbard. Really, it's a nickel plated blade too, really really pretty, um, and it's made by um, SMF with the Waffen Amp. So the judge. Judge did pretty good on that piece, I think. I think it's really, really kind of nice. It has a lot of, a lot of character to it. So you can see what the original airplane gray looked like on the scabbard here. Uh, and it's darkened over the years because nobody's, um, nobody's cared for it at all. But as they say, it is what it is. Uh, so that's kind of a neat thing. All right, and as I mentioned, I... I always like to save the best for last. Why don't you uh, freshen me up before we do this one? Oh yeah, you need a drink yeah. to see this last piece. It's uh, it just uh, man. Okay, Bob needs another drink. Well, oh, there's no germs on that. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Addy alcohol kills all that stuff. You don't have to worry. <laughs> All right, that's that. A little libation here for Rob. Poor Rob, he's manning this counter. This counter. Uh, the camera. Drunk, I guess. Manning the camera, never complains. I complain all the time. What are you talking about? Oh, that's about? right. You do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Constantly complain, Jeff. Well, he's still a good guy, guys. You guys talk to Robbie when you call on the phone? He's usually kind of grouchy and irritable, but uh, he doesn't really mean it. He just doesn't like to be, uh, I don't know, he's uh, shy, I guess is the word. Who knows, but... I'm not in sales, I'm just a photographer. Mm-hmm. You're not just a photographer, you're the man in the business. Yeah. Hey, when I'm out of here, you got to carry this thing on, Ob. You better be, uh, better get it. All right, guys. I threatened you with something good, and I think you'll like this. It's been a while uh, since I've been able to show you one of these, and, um, and I was so thrilled uh, with the two ladies, with the, not so much with these things, but uh, but this one piece uh, and this for you guys that that love untouched, never apart, completely as it came back from the war. Uh, apparently, Judge Kaming got this piece. Uh, probably not from the same place as he got these pieces, but just what do you see this, guys? Ta da Look at that chained SS. Look at the patina. Look at the grip. Look at the chain. It's a type 1 chain. 
and the mounts and the anodized scabbard, the anodizing is all there. Uh, this is an initial production piece, guys. Does it have the... No. I don't know whether it has the DRGM, <clears throat> sometimes no, they don't. They don't. No, they don't. Um, don't but look, so, at, look at the beautiful um, skulls and runes. Uh, the um, early um, center mount on the scabbard. It's the one that's got two screws. Usually with the anodizing we see two screws, but not all the time. And the anodizing is perfect. And it's got a, a, a nice nickel eagle in there. Boy, it's got great patina to it. Yeah. And now, you look at the nut. There's no way that that tang nut has ever had a wrench on it. It's just incredible. Never ever touched, guys. And I'll show you the back side. Uh, there we have the uh, Culture Zeichen stamping. And this is one of the ones they use the, um, the old parts. It has uh, uh, a group on the cross guard, which we see a lot of times. Not, not anything wrong with that. Look at the anodizing on the reverse, too. Um, it's interesting too, the, um, with the Type 1 chains, they're plated and the assembly is all plated too. So the chain, the top mount, the center ramp, and the bottom mount are nickel plated and the cross guards are solid nickel. But the, the patina is equal yeah, throughout. Where you get, up. Mm -hmm. And look at the grip too, uh, the grip is in oh, just beautiful condition. Uh, beautiful fit all the screws are here never turned now you're saying well how's the blade what do you think guys remember how the blade was on the uh, the bayonet that was like this well you're gonna see the same thing on this dagger Look at that, guys. Flat out mint. Flat out mint with all the cross grain. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Just incredible. And then on the other side, of course, it's an unmarked piece, like the initial production ones all were. Just absolutely uh, incredible. Well, that's pretty nice, Pop. So, guys, um, there are people out there that would... Uh, I'm going to clean that as soon as I get it and get all that grime off of it and all. <laughs> okay, I guess if you want to do that, you could do it. But then again, there's guys that, oh my God, it just, uh, uh, it, it's never been touched. It's just like it came out of the woodwork. Uh, the patina is not hurting the metal in any way. It's not going to deteriorate anything. So why do you have to clean it? The anodizing is perfect throughout it. The grip is beautiful. Um, this is a dagger that is for someone who appreciates and understands something that's never been fooled with. Uh, I'm sure the judge got this. Probably somebody gave it to him during the trials or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but he never did anything with it except put it away. And here's what we have today. Just a remarkable um, chained SS dagger. They just don't get any better. And it's right out of the woodwork. I mean, it's not... Like, well, yeah. truly, yeah. truly out of the woodwork. So, you like that one, Ob? <laughs> yeah, how could you not, right? My birthday's coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that, um, 
I, I just think that's an incredible piece. Let me just one more time. Oh, when you take take it out of the with those dull fittings and that absolute mint blade, it just um, it just is a wonderful um, wonderful piece. Um, you anyway, might get a couple calls on that one, Dad. I don't know, maybe. And when you put it in, ah, oh, you know, there it is. Uh, that's something you could enjoy for a lifetime, I think. So, guys, uh, I know we went long again. I guess I'm talking and uh, whatever, but uh, it was fun. Uh, you saw a lot of swill. You saw a lot of average stuff. Uh, but there were some nice things in there, too. And, uh, and I think just to look at something like that, is worth spending the hour or whatever it was to to go through this video um, keep sending me your comments I I really appreciate it we really get some nice some nice comments from people um, and again if I can if I can help you with anything uh, send me an email and uh, good luck to everybody and thanks for watching